by Gillette, the best a man can get. Welcome back to First Things First. Mark Schlereth joins us now. Hey, Mark. Well, Stank, how are you guys? How's it going? I had to I'm go good. Get the pool it's good, man. I was sitting over there listening to you guys argue, and I loved it. You're not coming in as Mark Schlereth or Stink Schlereth. You're coming in as, as, as your son. I need a relief pitcher. You need, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I need you to throw some. CC's coming you in you hot this morning. <laughs> I was I, coming in hot. I got it's up fine. this morning, got a nice workout right here, in. Right I didn't here. think Bring I was the lefty. Really? Man, I did. Bring in the lefty. Did CC you was really? up early, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't. Well, I'm I, done I, for the I'm, day. I'm going to need a nap after this guy. <laughs> I love it. I got, right. a, I got a theory for you. Thursday night Thursday night football, the team that scores the most points is going to win. Starring. Who are we starring? Starring the Saints and the Falcons. New Orleans a 9 and 3 in Atlanta to face the 7 and 5 Falcons. So Atlanta's coming off that loss to Minnesota, currently on the outside of that NFC playoff picture. Here's Matt Ryan on if the Falcons need to run the table to make the postseason. Whatever the case may be, uh, it doesn't matter if we don't take care of business Thursday. So beyond that, you know, I don't really worry about all that stuff. I think sometimes you know, if you're focused on too many things, I'm not smart enough to focus on that many things. You know, I'm, I'm better off just concentrating on one, one task at a time. All right, Mark, let's focus on the Atlanta portion of this. Judging by where they are right now in the playoff picture, is this a must-win game for them? I think it's a must-win game because of their schedule and because it's Thursday night. See, Thursday night is so difficult because you don't have time to really prep to really game plan. So you're going to run your base stuff versus their base stuff. If you're New Orleans, man, you, I mean, you get Monday to try to recoup. You do a walkthrough on Tuesday and Wednesday, bam, you're on a plane. So you're there. Mm -hmm. And it is really difficult. Your body hasn't adjusted. You have to travel. You can't game plan. So the advantage, there's a decided advantage that goes to the home team. Now, you have two against New Orleans, you have one against Carolina, and you have one against Tampa. So I look at this from a Thursday night perspective at home. Yes, it's a must win because this is the one that sets up the best for you. Going on the road to New Orleans in a regular week, it's going to be hard to win there. Mm -hmm. This is the one you have to find a way to win a Thursday night game because there is such a disadvantage to the road team on Thursday night. It is, I mean, me personally, it's not real football, but these are the rules that we play with. This is where we find ourselves, and so you have to find a way to win a Thursday night game. Atlanta has a huge advantage. You've got to take, it, uh, you've got to take uh, that advantage and, and make it your own. Yeah, and the league has done a good job as far as making these divisional games. You know your divisional opponents. Um, typically, right. the location is a lot closer, typically. Um, so there's less preparation because you have intel from years before or one earlier game that season. So that does help out in a bad situation as far as the preparation. To me, Atlanta, you think the schedule is tough going out. Let's not forget who they're coming off a game with. That was a physical game Sunday against the Vikings. Yep. I mean, that was a knockdown, right. drag out, and Atlanta was just starting to get their little swagger back. Right. Then they ran into potentially the best team in the NFC. So they got knocked back. So for me, this is a huge game, not only because of the games coming up, but because of the physical toll and the mental swing that this team was getting ready to make. Nick, you made a great point that I had no clue of. Um, last week when Atlanta was 6-5, and five, mm -hmm. that's the same place they were last year, which ended up leading them to the Super Bowl. So I was like... Whoa, I got this guy yeah, over here for I, a reason. Every time those numbers done, they right. don't lie. They're, they're, a talent, they're a talented football team. I almost I, went Austin Powers when I started that day. I almost said they've got to take advantage of this advantage. Yeah, Allow like, myself yeah. to introduce myself. Allow I caught myself, and I was like, wait a minute, myself. are you that dumb? I and I it. thought, yeah, I am that dumb. But you got I'm out like, of it. You yeah, I got I was like, I was back paddling. I was like a DB back there. I'm very lucky you didn't get hit in the neck and head. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. CC. It would have been his fault. When we talked about the college football playoff, we talked about uh, Alabama always scheduling Mercer or Chattanooga or someone mm -hmm. the week before the Auburn game. Why is that? It's because the physical toll on your body from playing a competitive SEC opponent or a, yes. you know, a big-time team, mm -hmm. it shows up a full week later, much less four days mm -hmm. later. So the fact that Atlanta is coming off of the Vikings game is noteworthy. Now, 
in fairness, New Orleans is coming off a physical game in Carolina, but Carolina, I watched, I mean, I watched that whole game because I lost a lot of money on that game. Like, Carolina's defense played one of its worst games of the year. Yes. Sure. It, neither guy, neither team is going to feel great today. And I'm going to tell you, in a short period of time, it's just mental. The team that won, hey man, how you feel? I feel pretty good, bro. Right. Right. The team that lost, oh my God, my body's killing me. And the pressure to not have an elong elongated losing streak. Right, and so you, the question is, is, that, is this a must win? And I say absolutely it is. Because when Atlanta, you mentioned the schedule of their final four, two against New Orleans, one against Carolina, and then a game against Tampa Bay. But also because Atlanta, to me, is a misleading seven and five. Like, you've got to look at how they got those seven victories. We can go to week one, where they almost lost to Chicago twice. Balls in the end zone, one dropped, one just short. Week three, they did lose to Detroit. The referee said, game over, Detroit wins, then they went and reviewed it, remember? That was the mm -hmm. Golden Tate at the yep. goal line game. The, the, other wins, they beat the Jets. They beat Dallas in their first game without Zeke. They beat Seattle in their first game without Cam and Richard Sherman. They, and they beat Tampa Bay. They, they have one great win this year. The game in week two where they beat Green Bay, which seems to just be a bad matchup for Green Bay. So Atlanta's seven and five easily is six and six, five and seven. They, and so I just, I think New Orleans is one of the best teams in the league. But this is a New Orleans team that's going to be playing most likely maybe without Brian Ingram and without Lattimore. So they've got two of their big guys. Who Mark are, Ingram. Uh, Mark Ingram, yes. rather, who are, mm -hmm. who, are, who are questionable for this game. So that could be a big advantage for the Falcons as well. Well, I mean, Thursday nights are hard to play. Like I said, the advantage goes to the home team. There is no question. And you look at Atlanta and... You know, you can look at all those schedules and you can look at the close wins and close losses. Let me just tell you, having called one of their games, that is one of the most athletic teams in National Football League. Yes. Bar none. If you mm -hmm. put a four by 100 team together and you pick just none but Atlanta, I, I think they may win it with guys like Julio Jones and Taylor Gabriel mm -hmm. and, and, um, and, you know, and Coleman, True, Freeman. Yeah, True Font. And, yeah. And, yeah they, I mean, they can flat run. They're a super athletic team. There is no question. You have to understand that it's been a work in progress with Matt Ryan and Steve Scar Sarkeesian calling plays because that rhythm has not necessarily been there. And they also have been without Freeman for a couple of games. So yes. they've had their issues as well. But that don't, make no bones about it. That is an exceptionally talented team. And when they're clicking, well, they're going to be hard for anybody to beat. Well, you mentioned Sarkeesian and Matt Ryan getting on the same page. I think it is – I think it's difficult to be the offensive coordinator for this team because you look at their weapons as far as in the passing game. You look at the MVP quarterback, Julio Jones, one of the two best wide receivers in the league, and you think the key to this offense is throwing the football. But last year, quietly, what were the Falcons awesome at? The two running backs yep. getting the ball being handed off or Same thing the Saints are doing. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly right. right. So this year – the Falcons are 7-1 and one when their running backs get at least 25 touches. They're 0-4 oh when they don't. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you have to hand it to them 25 times. Just throw it to them out of the right. backfield, getting those mismatches on linebackers. Like That's a part of their offense that was a huge part last year. Well, Hasn't been as big of a part this year. While I was doing that game, I had a statistical breakdown of the last four games before I did that. This was a couple of weeks ago. And Julio Jones, if he is targeted in a drive, that drive averages about 40.9 yards per play and yields over three points a play. If he is not targeted in a drive, it yields about 28 yards per drive and 1.7 points per play. So you can talk about running the ball, and it's important, but a lot of that running opens up that play Set action, up opens up number 11, mm -hmm. and let me just tell you this, number 11, freak show. Mm. Okay, <laughs> that's what he is. Like, I was on the field just like, man, that ain't, that ain't fair. Yeah, I was like standing on the field next to him going, not fair. Yeah, he's got a great body. Oh, my goodness, that dude. <laughs> freak show. Just no, he's freak got show. a great body. No, that's what yeah. he said. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what he said. Yeah. But Mark, stick yeah. around. Don't go, go anywhere. Go. Coming up, if Steelers player goes off body that I would in take the to clone locker him. room. I'm the locker room. That's next I'm, I'm, on First Things First. I'm starting either Plus. Julio.